Good morning, everybody. Josh RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. It is early, brisk little morning. I'm kind of enjoying the little respite from the heat that we've had. Um, I'm not caffeinated, so if I seem a, a little more off the normal, that's what's up. Uh, the good news is we got a really good camper for you today. It's about 3,100 pounds on the nose, a Wolf Pup 16 FQ. We originally sold it here when it was brand new. Overall, Looks pretty. They did some really smart, simple mods to it. There's a couple little bumps and bruises because they actually used it. And I think they went out for a couple seasons and I don't know if they just decided they were done camping for a little bit or if they decided it was time to upgrade. But either way, what's cool about a late model camper like this, it's new enough, you might still get same as new financing for it. Plus, since the folks are, I suspect, just done camping or they might have upgraded to a fifth wheel, I'm not sure a bunch of their camping accessories including a uh, load leveling and weight distributing hitch are all included with this this is has been and will probably continue to be one of the more popular wolf pup layouts certainly the most popular non-bunkhouse uh wolf pup that they put out there and i think that giant window and just the front walk around bed have always been two of the key things that have kind of uh tapped into that now uh looking around here i haven't seen any big scary areas there's no like big major dings or blemishes it, it's been used but it, it by all accounts it appears to be fairly well kept and i mentioned how the previous owners put in uh, a, a couple little modifications simple small stuff nothing really invasive uh, to any significant degree like all the original important factory stuff like you've got the household and usb outlets on both sides of the bed little campers like this sometimes don't have hanging storage and it is nice to see that you do have those hanging closets on both sides but I almost missed this on my first pass through. I walked over here and I saw there's this little black, you see that nub right in front of the, uh, the light right there? I was like, what is that? And I thought at first it might be a fuse. And then I realized it's a dimmer switch right above the bed. And that's genius. That's absolutely genius. And back in my electrical engineering days, I could tell you that that's actually called a potentiometer. But, you know, dimmer switch uh, works just fine. <laughs> Um, it doesn't have a window in the door, but it's got a full screen door. So if it's a nice day, you're wanting airflow, you want that nice flood of light in, you can always open the main door, leave the screen door in place. Not to mention between the big window beside the bed and the big window on the dining. I think most people would agree while a window in the door would be nice. It's not like you're, you're lacking in coverage over here by any means. Now there's storage below both of those benches. The TV is another thing that the folks added. Uh, so again, very non-invasive. There was already a TV mount right there. They just utilized it. And what's cool here is whether you're on that rear bench or on this model, if you just sit down on the, the bed, like I'm doing right here, you can just use the end of the bed like a couch. And that's interesting because the newest version of these Wolf Pups actually has a very simple style uh, folding mattress Murphy bed, which, um, you know, does exactly basically what I just displayed. Now, uh, all again, the original factory electronics like the Bluetooth DVD stereo here, because a lot of things don't have DVD now, but this used to just be a blank, wasted, stupid, empty panel like that one. It's one of the things, I know that they don't add double doors here for cost vectors, but I, I would really, on a new one, like to see two doors. So the folks said, eh, no problem, we'll just go to, I don't know, Walmart or Hobby Lobby or wherever and get a simple little organizer tote, and there you go. And that's pretty much it. That's like, like I said, they didn't invasively change anything when i say modify they did some very simple stuff i think that little uh dimmer switch for the kitchen or pardon me the um looking at the kitchen this, this i told you i'm not caffeinated you get what i mean the dimmer switch was the the most invasive thing you know it's a small thing sometimes having a flashlight where you can always get to it it's always smart i wonder if there's any bit god ah, you know <laughs> That's so stupid. It's not the dumbest thing I'm, I've done, but uh, certainly not the smartest. Let's, let's, let's take a look at the kitchen here. If you notice in that first cabinet I just opened up, all of the original factory like 
warning stickers and stuff, the leftovers are still there because when they put these things together, they have one giant sheet of every sticker every camper they could ever build might need. Well, sometimes there's leftovers, and a lot of times Cherokee just includes those with the camper. They even have the original factory stickers here. They didn't throw away nothing. And I do think it's smart that they included that small little wastebasket over there. Sometimes it doesn't have to be big. It just has to be enough. And I, since it's so small, it's not really in the way. All sealed edge counters, whether it's in the kitchen or over here in the dining, dining can also fold down into a small sleeper, good for a big dog or a small kid. Um... I was also very impressed if you notice inside the appliances, like the microwave and stuff, very clean in there. And this is a two-door, six-cubic-foot gas electric fridge freezer. So if you're planning on some boondock, and that is a battery-sipping uh, fridge, not a battery-gulping fridge. Now over here, the uh, sh this is just a shower, not a tub. They hadn't yet adopted the newer Cherokee Shub, like I sometimes mention. And I think the folks pretty much use this more for closet space. Now, this is a six and a half foot tall camper on the inside, six and a half foot ceiling. And with no skylight, I'm about 6'3". Because you have to step up in the shower a little bit for plumbing code below, you know, I'm cranking my head a little bit. But it's a small camper. That's That might be an accommodation that someone's willing to make. Good news is you're, it's a lot more fluffy friendly around the toilet. I, I did not feel really, uh, you know, cramped in there. Over here, just a giant mirror. And since it isn't a big cabinet, not big and bulky, it doesn't make the room look and feel small. I really would like it if there was a little more cabinet space here. But since it's a, a wood studded trailer, every 16 inches on center back here, there's a stud. So if you wanted to add a small cabinet here, off to the side where it's not going to be a toilet head knocker, on used RVs, it feels less scary to do that versus a brand new one. You're not worried about, oh man, what's gonna happen to my warranty? And I'll tell you, when I first opened that up, there was a moment I went, oh, gross, because I see a sewer hose in the bathroom cabinet. The good news, um, with some touch-free investigation, I was able to discern that, thankfully, uh, it was unused, which, whoo! Now, we're parked a little close to this trailer next to us, so apologies, I'm not going to be able to get you a big, broad side view of the campsite here. Power Tongue Jack does the heavy lifting for us. Very handy if you are properly setting up your weight distributing load leveling hitch, which once again, that plus a whole bunch of other stuff looks like is included in here. Some, those are some way over the top heavy duty wheel chocks for a little trailer like this, but hey, better too big than too small, right? Um, the uh, simple side mount solar prep plug. This was built, by the way, before the Cherokee juice pack really found its way into production. More ride stable steps, taking a lot of the wiggle out of the RV. That's an anti-slam door with a big handle. And once again, we've got that extra big campsite window over here, which also has a TV hookup down below and speakers on both sides. Uh, power awning. So, uh, you know, power awning, power tongue jack, really. Manual corner jacks are the only thing uh, you'll have to really manually crank on this, as the manual name would manually apply. I'm an idiot. But... <clears throat> I think we determined that when I flashed a flashlight directly into my own face. I just realized. Sometimes I forget. I, I do this all the time. I forget that I have a camera in my hand, as dumb as that sounds. Like, it's like I'm just walking around talking to myself, which, believe it or not, is not an uncommon thing for actually. I bet you can't believe that. So, apologies for that. I, if I blinded you with that, I am very sorry. I didn't even consider it until just now. Back to the camper. <laughs> it does have a walkable roof. You see the uh, there this original. Um, spare tire cover I did spot in the pass-through when we peeked in there just now and I uh, I will always try to be fair there's a couple things I noticed out here the decals back here they have not weathered well and I you know hope you appreciate that I get you right up because if just two steps back back here you can't see any of that and I could have just easily walked around and been like yep she looks good and then you show up and you're like, ah, oh, it's a crack decal, but whatever, I drove four hours, I guess I'll still take it. That's not how I'm going to be. And on a similar note, I, I told you, this has been used. I think they camped where there were some low hanging tree branches because if you walk down the side of this, and I don't even know how well it's going to translate into camera, like there's a little one right there. There's a couple little, almost like woody woodpecker bumps. You can kind of see one right there. Uh, where it looks like maybe uh, a tree branch had bumped into it. There's one, two more right here. There we go. Get some light on them from that direction. You can kind of see it. I noticed 
similar things across the nose of the RV as well up around that top line. Now they're all up there pretty high at about you know eight foot and, and above, which once again makes me think that it is probably something related to uh, tree branches where they camped. A little camper like this, very likely they did some serious like off the beaten path camping. And by the way, did you notice that full hot cold outside utility shower? Nice feature over there. And this does have a gas and electric water heater, which is cool. The electric side of that water heater, by the way, is very easily missed because if you look at the control panel inside the RV, there's two switches. One says water pump, one says water heater. Well, the electric side of the water heater, the switch is actually in the housing itself. So I hope you appreciate the look of things today. If she looks like she's the right one for you, give us a call. Um, I might leave a link in the video description of a more current copy of this. If you like this, but you're thinking, ah, I'd prefer something that maybe doesn't have the Woody Woodpecker marks. What do they look like brand new? The updated interior, some updated features. Maybe I'll, I'll leave you a link. Maybe you'd like to see something like that. And if I forget, please remind me because sometimes I think of stuff like this. Then by the time I get to actually posting this, I forget what I said. Kind of like I forget I have a camera in my hand and I forget not to flash a flashlight at my eyes. I never claimed to be a smart man. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.